So although I might not be an expert in React Native, the thing I am an expert in is being a new developer for React Native. I've been working with React Native for roughly the last few months and I've came up against a few things that were kind of confusing. There are some things that I wish people would have told me before I got started that would have probably made my life a lot easier. And that's the whole purpose of this video is five helpful tips for new React Native developers. If I had the ability to time travel, these are the five things I would have told myself when I got started with React Native. So let's go ahead and get started. The first tip and perhaps the most important one of this entire video is to understand what it means to either use or eject from Expo. As a new React Native developer trying to get your environment set up, going to the official reactnative.dev website, you're going to be met with two particular options, one of which is selected by default, and that's going to be the Expo CLI Quick Start. Besides reducing new project generation to a single line of code, it also does a bunch of other really useful things. The big three things it does is live reloads, seamless upgrades, and then managed builds. And that's perhaps the most important one. Basically the way managed builds works is once you sign up for an Expo account, you're able to push your project to Expo and they'll do a build for both Android and iOS. This means that you'll be able to download an Android APK and Apple IPA without requiring Android Studio, Xcode, or a Mac or anything like that. And best of all, it's completely free. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Expo sounds amazing. Why would I even consider doing it any other way? There's one huge downside to using Expo, and depending on your project, it's either a non-issue or a showstopper, and that's you cannot use any native modules. For my particular project I've been working on, it's been a non-issue because it doesn't really use any complex modules, but for your project, it might be a little different. Whether or not you think you need native modules, you should always start with the Expo from the start, and that's because Expo offers this thing called Expo Eject. What Expo Eject essentially does is it converts an Expo project into a normal React Native CLI project and removes Expo entirely from the equation. Keep in mind that this is a one-way operation and you're not able to uneject after the fact, at least not easily. My approach to Expo is basically going to be I'm going to use it until I can't. Next tip is to understand that there is no document object model and this is not a browser. Conceptually speaking, normal React and React Native are the same. The big difference is there's no event passed user controls, so e.target.id or e.target.value is not really a thing. Instead, user controls will pass the actual value to the onChange event. So it would also follow that DOM manipulation is simply not a thing. However, there's of course going to be some overlap. For instance, if you have a reference of a text input, there are methods called blur and focus, and this is the same as what you would have in the browser. However, you don't have these because you're manipulating the DOM, you have these because the React Native developers expose those two methods for you to use. So the main thing here is just don't assume that things that worked on the browser are going to work in React Native, that's all. The next tip is to use Redux. If you haven't used Redux before, think of it as a global state, in which case you can pass portions of that state to components as props. And then to update the global state, you can dispatch events from any component in your application. Where I found this particularly useful was in showing dialogues, and that's because the dialogues are located in my root component because they have to draw on top of everything. Without Redux, what I'd have to do is pass down a callback function farther and farther down into nested components, that way it could call show dialogue if it needed to show something. And this is absurd, of course, because it created a lot of complexity in the application for no reason. So by using Redux, I'm able to have the dialogue at my root component, and then when I dispatch an event to show the dialogue, it simply looks at the change to the global state and shows the dialogue. Simple. And if you're coming from native development in Android or iOS, then you're already familiar with creating dialogues on demand in a more procedural kind of way. And using Redux for this purpose makes it seem kind of more natural. Now, I'm definitely not saying use Redux for everything, but definitely use it where it makes sense. Next step is to consider using a UI framework in your project. Now, which UI framework you use is complete preference, and that's totally up to you. But what it does do is it makes the look across your application a little more uniform. Now, when I say uniform, I'm specifically referring to the actual appearance of an element across devices. What I don't mean is strip away Android and iOS specific appearance for something that's totally separate. I use the React Native Paper Framework, and you can see what they do here with checkbox. So they have checkbox. If you use their checkbox element, then it's going to show the Android checkbox on Android, the iOS checkbox on iOS, which is really cool because it means that Android users get the typical elements that they expect to see, and iOS users get the typical elements that they expect to see. However, they also have checkbox.android and checkbox.ios. And what these do is these allow you to show iOS style checkboxes on Android if you so desire, or show Android style checkboxes on iOS if you so desire. And it's not just checkboxes, it's also radio buttons and switches and other elements as well. And this is one of those things where phone users expect to see these kind of controls. 
And this is a really simple thing you can do with no extra effort to give your users the feeling that they're using an app that was built for their exact platform. If you ultimately choose to use no UI framework at all, then you have to manage all of this on your own. And the final tip is it's completely okay to use a bunch of community modules. In fact, React Native encourages it. React has always been a tool that doesn't try to do everything great. It tries to do a couple things amazingly. And these principles have transferred over into React Native as well. For instance, there is a class called Async Storage, and that is a module which allows you to access storage on the device. If you go to the official Async Storage page on reactnative.dev, you'll be met with a message that says deprecated, use one of the community packages instead. And on this page, you'll be met with a list of different options that you can use to do Async Storage. So this is React Native ceding control to async storage by saying, you know what, we had an async storage module, but it's not great. And the ones in the community are actually better, so you should probably just use those. And this is not the only instance. Expect to see a lot of times where React Native will defer to a community module, and you'll see that reflected in the documentation. And of course, it's not just React Native modules. Anything that you're used to in Node.js in the browser, you can more or less use here unless that module actually interacts with the browser, in which case it probably will not work in React Native. And those are my five tips. React Native in general has been really easy to use and I've really enjoyed working with it. There's just a few hangups and a few things that felt kind of clunky and they are all addressed with these five tips. So hopefully this helps some new developers who are getting involved in React Native and potentially some veteran React Native developers who have maybe been doing it the hard way. If you have any questions or comments or you want to tell me about your experience with React Native and whether or not you think these tips will help you or have helped you in the past, then definitely tell me below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon.